Well, good morning, everyone. I was very grateful to Father Matt to allow me to preach this weekend. Uh, he had preached, of course, the last two weekends, so he's given me a chance now. Uh, but then early in the week, I, I looked at the readings, and the first reading, as we heard, was about finding a good wife. And I'm like, okay, well, what do I do with that? Hmm. And then, uh, and then the psalm also was about, you know, blessed are those whose, you know, you'll be blessed, your, your children will be like olive bushes or plants around your table. Okay, what do I do about that? <laughs> And I thought, Father Matt, maybe, can you preach this weekend? Maybe I'll try next weekend. But thankfully, you know, looking at the readings a little more closely, we see there is another theme that emerges in our readings. And it's a very important theme for us to consider. It's the theme of fear. Now, that may not sound like a lot of fun to think about, but it turns out that it's really important for us in our spiritual lives to be aware of where we experience fear and how that can be an impediment for us, how it can be a limit in our spiritual growth and our relationship with God. So, we hear this, of course, uh, in the gospel passage because the, uh, the third servant is afraid of God. What does he say? He says he, he receives his one talent and he doesn't invest it. He doesn't put it in the bank. He doesn't do anything with it. Why? Because he says, you know, Lord, I knew you were a demanding master. You were demanding, harvesting where you did not scatter, etc. So, in other words, he's saying that God is demanding and that he's very unpredictable. And therefore, out of fear, I'm just going to stay put, not get too involved, not give of my my, uh, my talent, uh, and therefore play it safe. And this happens for us all in the spiritual life in different ways. You know, maybe there are some of us who experience fear of going to confession. I can relate to that. I was a, a revert to the faith, as we, as we say. I was raised Catholic, but we didn't really practice much. And so after I got confirmed, I did what a lot of young people do. I drifted, and I didn't really get into other religions or anything like that. I just was nothing. Until my uh, senior year in college, I started to come back into my faith, and it was finally when I was in graduate school that I went back to confession for the first time in many years. And I was afraid. I didn't know what the priest was going to say, if he was going to scold me or be angry, or what would happen. And it's also just embarrassing, and I didn't want to have to face that. But thankfully, somehow, God must have given me some kind of push from behind, and, and I went. I went to confession, and it was the most beautiful experience of my life. I came out of that confessional just floating on the clouds. And the priest, you know, he wasn't angry at all. He was super gentle. He, he just talked me through the Ten Commandments to help me examine my conscience, and it was a wonderful, beautiful experience. And today, as a priest, you know, I'm so grateful for that experience because now I, as a, as a confessor, love to be able to give that kind of gift to others. I heard another priest once say, I give easy pass confessions. I don't know, if you, do you have easy pass out here? It's the toll thing that you put on your windshield, you know, whatever. You know, it allows you to just go right through, right? I'm, I try to make it easy for people. I give light penances. Well, that's one way in which fear, of course, can keep us from making progress spiritually and keep us away from the Lord. Uh, there are other times when fear might get in our way. We might be afraid of death, and and therefore seek distractions instead of turning to the Lord in prayer. I knew another, a friend of mine actually, was was someone who for many years in in her early married life wasn't open to children. And only later, after she went through a deepening of her conversion experience, a deepening of her faith, she looked back and she realized where it came from. And to her surprise, she discovered that she didn't even know she wasn't aware but it can't, the, the, her hesitation to accept children was because she was afraid, subconsciously afraid of the pain of childbirth. And so fears like this can get into our minds. We don't even know they're there sometimes, but they keep us from doing the good things that the Lord is inviting us to do. And so it's super important for us to be able to look at our fears and examine them and to be able to say, okay, where, do, where is this coming from? And then what can I do about it? Fears uh, certainly, you know, are natural. 
on, on some level, they're good and expected, right? If you're out for a walk in, a, in, in the woods and a bear chases after you, yes, you're, we're going to run away. It, fear does that for us, and it helps us to run fast. And there's a little joke that says, uh, you know, two guys were on a hike, and a bear started chasing after them, and as the bear was getting closer and closer, they were running away. The one guy says to the other, you know, there's, there's no chance that we're going to be able to outrun this bear. Why are we even bothering to run? And the other guy says, well, I don't have to outrun the bear. I just have to outrun you. So fear in that sense is useful, right? Um, but again, in the spiritual life, it's not, it's not a help, it's a hindrance. Uh, where does fear come from also in our spiritual lives? Sometimes we, we do feel afraid of God or the things that He might ask of us, and fear of God can come from uh, maybe an experience we had in our upbringing. I worked in the seminary for many years teaching, and there are a lot of guys who come in, and maybe, maybe they're dads or, or, or mom uh, was not always the best example. And, you know, sometimes there's, you know, a lot of anger or violence or alcohol involved, things like that, which sometimes can give us, all of us can, can receive from those kind of experiences, uh, a false image of God. And we might subconsciously be thinking that God is prone to anger and vengeful or just, you know, a strict taskmaster. You know, and we can, we can start to think this. And I had a, I had a friend uh, of mine who said to me that this is kind of what he grew up with. And one day he was listening to a talk, and, and it was all about how God is love and merciful and gentle with us. And he realized after, uh, even though for much of his life he had experienced this false image of God, he, he came to the realization that God loves him tenderly. <laughs> And he said, when that really sank into my heart, I wanted to just go around telling the whole world that God loves us. It was so freeing for him to experience that. Well, we can look to good examples, for example, uh, to good examples that can help to heal those, those images of God for us. One example that I love is the divine mercy image, the, the image right over here on the wall. You know, when we look at Jesus, and we look at his gaze, we realize that he's there to love us, to bless us. Yes, to heal us and take away sins too. But that's, we, we come to him with that sense of joy even, of being able to unload our sins. He's not there, you know, his hand is raised, but it's not there to slap us, right? His hand is raised in blessing. He wants to bless us. And Jesus even said to St. Faustina, and she wrote it in her diary, how I long for aching mankind to snuggle close to my merciful heart, because I am love and mercy itself. That's what Jesus says in the diary. And so if we read the diary of St. Faustina, or ponder those passages in, in Scripture that, that can help heal us and, and, and give us a new, better image of God, that's the way to help to overcome these fears. Now, Another way that we can grow and overcome those fears is by having a healthy fear of the Lord. And that's what we heard about in the first reading and in the psalm, because both of them mentioned that expression, the fear of the Lord. The virtuous woman in that first reading, for example, was someone who had a good fear of the Lord, and she was praised for that. Now, that kind of fear of the Lord doesn't mean the emotion of fear and cowering in fear and staying away from God. That fear of the Lord is sometimes translated as wonder or awe. It's actually a gift of the Holy Spirit. Those of you who have gone through confirmation class, do you remember learning about the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Well, the last one that we typically list is fear of the Lord, but it doesn't mean fear, the emotion. It means wonder or awe at God. And when we ponder the goodness of God and His greatness and His love, that fills our hearts with a sense of, yes, certainly wanting to turn over our sins to Him, but even more, it leads us to want to then give our lives to Him and to serve Him faithfully. And that's, that's the response of the first two servants in the gospel passage. Instead of cowering in fear and failing to invest the money, out of an eagerness to serve, they invested the money because they, were, they knew the Lord. They knew His goodness, and they knew how happy He would be if they take a chance on God. So that's the first two uh, people in the gospel passage. Now, how do we grow in this fear of the Lord? Well, on one hand, it's a gift of the Holy Spirit, so it's just given to us at baptism, through confirmation, but we can 
exercise it more, and we can put it into practice. And we do that by, again, pondering the goodness of the Lord. So I've already mentioned how we can read Scripture, we might read the diary of St. Faustina and marvel at God's goodness, but we can also go for a walk. And so here we have a beautiful scene in nature, and when you go out for a walk, it's hard to see on this screen, maybe this screen over here is a little better, uh, you can see there that you know, beautiful scene and we can just marvel at God's goodness, marvel at His creation. And as we do that, we, we start to realize that He's saying the same thing to us just as He's saying in the Bible, I love you. Have you ever heard it said that nature is God's first book? Before the Bible was written, we had creation. And so when we look at creation, we realize that God is saying to us, I love you. I also love looking up at the sky at night. And okay, so we can't see this quite with our naked eye. These are images from the James Webb Space Telescope. This is an, uh, a photograph of the Orion Nebula. And this is a, a beautiful image of what's called the Rho Opfiuki Op Cloud Complex. It's a place where stars are born. It's, it's, these are amazing images. They look angelic even, don't they? Well, there are some beautiful things we can ponder and marvel at God's goodness by pondering that are even closer to us, such as a little baby, right? Who cannot look at a baby and just be in amazement at how good God is, right? God, God's amazing. Good artwork also can help us to marvel at God, and this is an image of the Church of St. Ignatius. It's an incredible, beautiful ceiling. I have a close-up here of it. So it's still a lot of detail, and it's kind of hard to see from the back, but hopefully you get a little bit of a, a sense. This is a, it's a domed ceiling, and they painted it to look three-dimensional as if we're looking up into heaven. And you see the, the saints on the clouds and kind of, uh, you know, looking at them from below, but everybody's looking up into heaven. And, you know, this can fill us and get our imagination going about how amazing and, and awesome heaven is going to be. And all of this helps to correct any negative image of God that we might have and helps fill our hearts with hope and expectation uh, of the God that we look forward to meeting face to face one day, the God who loves us so tenderly. And that is what fills us then with the desire to serve Him. Not, not out of fear of punishment, but out of amazement at His goodness and His love for us. And so today, just to sum up then, we can grow in, in overcoming the negative fear that we have, the fear of God, being afraid of Him, and grow in authentic awe or fear of the Lord, as it's called, by three steps. So the first step is to remember, because we often just forget how good God is to us. So we can remember His goodness and pondering Scripture, pondering beautiful images in creation, or going out for a walk and pondering His creation is, is, are all great ways to do that. So remember. And then secondly is to, um, to, to have awe, to increase our awe, to exercise it, uh, just marvel at God. And then finally, the last one is take a chance. That is, out of amazement for God and His love for us, take a chance. Do something. Maybe it's go to confession if you've been away. Maybe it's, you know, get involved with some kind of ministry in the parish or give back in some way. Maybe it's serve the homeless, whatever it might be. There's always some way that the Lord is inviting us to give of ourselves out of gratitude for what He does for us. So these three steps then are to remember, to have awe, and to take a chance. So unfortunately, you know, I, I was hoping for a really great mnemonic device, but if you take the first letters there, all we get is the word rat. <laughs> so it's not the best mnemonic device, but maybe that's good because then you'll remember it. But remember, have awe at God and then take a chance on Him. And then when we do, we know and trust that God willing, we'll be hearing those encouraging words uh, that Jesus said to the good servants, you know, you have been faithful in small matters. I will give you great responsibility. Come share your master's joy.